Hey guys and welcome to the channel. Now a very popular topic that I've covered previously are the frequently asked questions. So in this video I'm going to go through another 10. So you can find answers from anything from like checking your engine oil to resetting your tyre pressures and even things like internet and your Mercedes. But there's loads to cover so without any further interruption let's dive straight in at number one. In fact, while we're here, let's talk about how to check your engine oil. And no, that's not a trick uh, kind of statement or anything. Most modern cars don't have a dipstick. So if you ever open up your bonnet, you will struggle to find one. And basically because modern cars are so sophisticated, they can check the quantity and quality of the engine oil when you're on the move. In fact, I don't think even Mercedes expect you to get your hands dirty. So you can close this and do it all digitally on the screen. And to do it in the car, it's super, super easy. So all you need to use is the top right hand corner of the steering wheel, if it's right hand drive, press the home button, swipe all the way across to a thing called service, then go down to a thing that says engine oil level. And in here is where you can get an exact reading of the engine oil in the car. Now, of course, the engine will have kind of have to be on for a few minutes just for it to kind of circulate in the engine for it to get a reading. But you can view it all on there just in case. And yes, the car will notify you if it's low in the first place. Now for this next one guys, this one is the cruise control and limiter on the screen. So a few of you have asked before, once you've used it, it kind of stays on the screen but greyed out and a few of you have asked if you can get rid of it. Sadly not, because basically it's there to indicate what the set button is going to do when you next use it. So I know that when you first kind of turn the car on a bit like this here, um, it's kind of not on the screen, but if I turn it on, and then go to use cruise control, you'll see it will be there on the bottom left or sometimes it's on the top, uh, depending on the model, of course. But uh, yes, once you have used it for that journey, it will remain there telling you what the set button will do if you kind of accidentally press it or something. Now, of course, if you do turn the car off and then turn it back on, it will kind of disappear. But then once you've used it, it will appear and it will stay there again until you kind of next use it. So it's kind of useful, it just shows you what the set button's gonna do, but no, you can't get rid of it once you've used it for that particular journey, as I know a few of you have asked. Now for the next one, did you know that you can track your Mercedes on your app? So the app looks just like this on the screen. Uh, basically, uh, you can lock and unlock it and on some cars, put your windows down, open the sunroof if you have one, among various other functions. Again, it can vary from model to model, but the tracker function is bottom right-hand corner. If we tap that, it will show you where the car is. So I'm there and the car is um, over there somewhere. Now it's not designed to be used for uh, thefts or anything like that. I guess you could, but it's not designed to be used in that way because it can be switched off on the inside of a car. So uh, if you know where to look. So um, yeah, it's not designed to be um, used for that sort of thing, but um, it is quite useful, especially when it comes to uh, airport car parks, as they are quite big. So it can obviously show you uh, where you last parked. Now for this next one, a few of you have asked before if you can save specific settings on your key. Now sadly with Mercedes, it doesn't work that way. The keys are generic. You can save a couple of settings, but that's more down to how you unlock it, you know, whether it does the driver's door or all the doors. But for specific multimedia system settings or seat preferences, they're not saved on the key. So if you want to see the key one, click on the pop-up banner up above. However, in answer to your question about um, whether you can save settings, you can't do it on the key, but you can do it on the profiles. And the reason why Mercedes have it this way around is you're limited to, basically, if you have it on the key, to how many keys you have. So if you only have two keys, you can only save two user settings. The way Mercedes do it on the profiles is because uh, you can actually have more profiles than keys. So then you have six or seven profiles, you can have six or seven drivers with um, various settings and things. And the way it works is literally on the top right hand corner of the screen. Basically it's compatible with models NTG6 or NTG7 or basically anything with MBUX. And if you tap on the top right hand corner, you can go in here and add yourself as a user. Now I can't do it in this particular car at the moment because it is brand new. Um, but uh, of course, if, if you have bought a Mercedes and you'll be able to go in there and add it. And some of the newer ones as well, when you go on to activate Mercedes me and add a profile, you basically have to scan this QR code and then you can add it to your phone. Now, of course, we'll blur that out so none of you can scan it. So obviously this is brand new, but yes, you can scan that and you can add up to six or seven users all with your own unique settings. 
Now for this next one guys, this is for those of you who are lucky enough to have the driving assistance package, basically the adaptive cruise control. So you may have found before when you're driving down the road, say you've got it set at 70, and then you come across um, a different speed limit sign or something, and then the car will start to slow down based on the speed limit it's detected. You can turn that small feature off if you want to. And if you want to do that, basically go to the home screen, go onto settings, then go to the assistance menu and find traffic sign assist and turn off a thing that says adopt speed. That's the thing that basically changes the speed automatically when it detects a speed limit sign. So I know a few of you have asked before if you can turn that off and you can, it's just well hidden in that menu. Now up next for the next question guys, this is for those of you that use dynamic select, you know the one with the different drive modes, sport mode, eco mode and comfort modes, that sort of thing. And a few of you have asked, is there a default mode that you can choose for when the car starts up? Sadly, no, it's due to emission requirements, but on some cars you can get it to kind of pop up, do you want to resume your last mode? So it's like one less step, I guess, to um, kind of load up your last mode. And it basically looks like this. So when you turn the car on, you'll get a little pop-up banner up here on the top asking if you'd like to resume your last mode. Just tap that and then you're on your last mode. If you want to set this up, it's quite easy. You just basically use your center screen. So just press the home button, go across to settings on the far right hand side, and then go to a thing called vehicle and look for a thing that says dynamic select. In here, there'll be like prompt when starting or ask when starting along those lines. Just make sure that's on. It'll ask if you want to resume your last kind of dynamic select driving program. Now the next question that a few of you guys ask is relating to the NTG software version. So for example, this is NTG6 here, so you guys will be familiar with this one. However, a few of you have asked, can you update to the new version which is found in some of the new cars? And sadly, no you can't. It's not just a software update, it's a completely different multimedia system. For one, they have a different screen. They've also got different processors and graphics and stuff like that, so it's not a software um, update, sadly. It's a completely different system and is only found on those new models that come out. One good practice though is just to make sure your car is linked to Mercedes Me, so you do get the latest bug fixes and security enhancements, and map updates if you've got a valid subscription and that sort of thing. This is found, of course, if you've got your car linked to your Mercedes Me account, head over to the Manage Services section or the Manage Digital Extras section on the website or even on the app and make sure you've got it all enabled on there and that way you have the latest version available for your car. Now up next guys relates to the internet in your car. So yes, did you know on most Mercedes from I think it's about roughly 2017-ish onwards, you can basically pay monthly and turn your car into like a mobile Wi-Fi hotspot. Basically this runs through Vodafone and you can basically get your passengers to connect to Wi-Fi and then you can kind of browse around with this kind of like mobile experience, which is pretty cool. However, your mobile phone can probably already do this. So there's no need to pay again, because you're probably already paying monthly for your phone. There's no need to pay again for the car to do it. So most of the time you can just like go onto settings on your phone and enable personal hotspot or something. And then it turns your phone into like this mobile Wi-Fi. But it is quite useful. If you want to do it in the car, you can do it on like a road trip or something with your kids in the back. And then you can do it that way. A byproduct of that is then on some cars, this will be MBUX versions, the one was with the uh, Hey Mercedes, you can actually browse the internet on the car as well using the browser function. Um, it's not compatible with any other models, it's just models with MBUX. But I will say that your experience will be faster on the smartphone just because processors in smartphones are ridiculously quick these days anyway. So it's kind of user preference. You, your phone probably can do it anyway, but there is the option to do it in the car as well. So I know a few of you have asked before how it works and um, if you can do it. Uh, but I'll put a link in the description down below if you want to go to that specific video on how to set it up. Now next up guys is how you can reset your tire pressure monitor. So this is really easy and it takes a few seconds. You will need to do this if you have had a puncture and if the tire's gone really, really low and you've just filled it up with air, like the fuel station or something, you might need to reset that monitor. So all you need to do on the top right hand corner of the steering wheel or top left if it's left hand drive, basically press the home button, swipe this all the way across to a thing called service, which is usually on the far right click it in here and then you should see a screen just like this. Now if you see a different screen to this, you probably have the previous version which will be NTG6. Basically just scroll down until you see tires. But if you have this version, click the OK button and then you'll see tire pressure there. 
click OK, and then it'll say on the screen, use current tire pressures as new reference values. Basically swipe this left, then click OK, and it will basically relearn based on the pressures you've just set at the fuel station. Now guys, for the last one today, this is how you can change your low beam or your dipped beams for driving abroad. Now you don't have to do this on every single Mercedes-Benz model out there. It does vary. So if you're not sure, just speak with your local Mercedes and they can check your specification and let you know. But if you do, basically have a look on the settings menu on the central display. So press the home button, go to settings, and then go to lights and look for a thing that says either low beam or dipped beams. They refer to the same thing. And then in here you can choose either left side traffic or right side traffic. And some cars are so sophisticated they can do it automatically, which I'm guessing it does it via GPS based on where your, um, where your car is. So that's pretty cool. And to clarify, left side traffic versus right side traffic, you choose the one of the side of the road you drive on not for oncoming cars. So I'm in the UK, I choose left side traffic. If I drive in another country where you drive on the opposite side, you will choose right side traffic. Hopefully that will clarify that one up. Now guys, if you've made it this far, well thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. And as a bonus, if you want to see more questions answered, click this one right here, as that one's gonna take you to even more that I've answered. So hopefully you guys will enjoy that one even further. Huge shout out to Sandown Mercedes as they help provide access to all these awesome cars you see in the videos. Thanks guys, until next week, see you then.